So one of the main things that stresses everybody out is moisture. How to retain moisture. How to keep your hair from losing moisture. Well, but before we can tackle the solution, we need to address the cause. So let's talk about why we're lacking moisture and why we have dry hair and scalp in the first place. Let's take it all the way back. What are the leading causes for dry scalp or dry hair? We're gonna start here because moisture is the thing that confuses everybody. We're a little bit confused about what moisture is and how to retain or gain moisture. And because we're so confused about it, we kind of make stuff up and instead of increasing the moisture content of our hair and scalp, we actually limit it and cause scalp infections. Let me explain. Look, don't, don't, don't leave. Let me explain. Sir, would you please sit down? When the scalp is not adequately hydrated or when your skin cell turnover cycle is off, you will notice dry and flaky scalp. This could be from the weather and your climate. This could be from exposure to a lot of environmental pollutions, depending on what area you live in. There's a lot of construction or if you're in a really dusty area like me, I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's like the sand bowl is what they call some parts of Vegas. Exposure to harsh chemicals or internal factors like dehydration or poor nutrition. These are all things that can lead to dry scalp or dry or a dry hair shaft or both. The overuse of hair products. By using too many hair products on the hair shaft, you put a layer and a barrier between your hair shaft and your natural sebum, which we'll talk about in a second. By you putting an excess amount of hair products on the hair shaft, you end up weighing the hair down. And when you weigh the hair down, this is what happens. Most people think that a styling product is going to be adding extra to your hair. You think that by doing things like the lock method and things of that nature and layering products on top of the hair, I know it seems like the more product you put on, the more control you have, but it's actually the opposite. The more product you have on the hair, the thicker the barrier is between everything that is secreting out of your scalp to keep your hair stronger in the first place. The more product you put on your hair, the drier the hair can feel. And this is just styling in general, right? The more product you put on the hair for like a silk press, the worse it's gonna come out, boo, be all stringy and looking funky and dirty. Another cause for dry scalp or what appears like dry and flaky scalp could be different scalp conditions like dandruff, seborrheic dermatitis, scalp psoriasis, and a couple of other disorders that we talk about. When you look at the scalp, at the when you look at your hair the first thing that you want to do if you see any flex of any shape or form is say oh this is dry scalp but in reality those flakes on the scalp could really be just a display of something that's happening on a more internal level so the flakes from certain scalp conditions is a sign okay let's keep going Sir, would you please sit down? Number four is age. As we get older, the amount of natural sebum that is produced within the hair's follicle just decreases a little bit. So this is why, you know, knowing about different essential oils and how to use them, not using essential oils on their own, but how to mix them, how to use them, what herbs to begin to ingest into the body becomes really, really important because by you ingesting certain herbs or using certain essential oils and botanicals in the body then what happens is you're able to increase the body's natural sebum level which in return will keep you from having dry and brittle and broken hair as you get older right and this doesn't just mean like you in your 40s like I'm gonna be 33 this year in July so as I'm getting older my sebum level is not decreasing it's increasing we'll talk about that in another video because of because of my age, I do understand that my body is going to start producing sebum at different rates. Like before, I would have a pretty good sebum level, but now I'm producing too much. You know what I'm saying? Like my hair is super oily. Like it's not thin, it's just oily all the time. 
know what I'm saying? But anyway, as you understand more things about yourself, you begin to put things in perspective. But with age, the older the older you get, the more your hair will begin to start your the more your body will begin to decrease producing certain amino acids that you need for healthy skin, hair, and nails. So you just have to put them back in. Not necessarily by putting them in your hair. Number five, scientists find when you do studies that a lot of people just dependent on their genetic makeup are more prone to dry scalp. Now, and this is this is my scientific opinion from years of study and things of that nature. I find that anytime they say that something is genetic, it's not like, oh, there's this gene that you're born with that automatically makes your hair dry. When you look at a lot of people genetically, sometimes for the most part, you'll notice that a certain group of people, they have a certain weight, um, like most of the women or most of the men in the family are like a certain weight. They eat a certain thing, like there's certain family traditions, a certain way they only, they, a certain way that they cook stuff, they have to use a certain amount on the oil a specific type of bacon a specific specific ingredients right so this doesn't mean that genetically you're going to have thin hair if somebody else has thin hair it just means that most of the habits are habitual and passed down generation after generation so you'll notice everybody that comes from this genetic pool with the same types of patterns and things of that nature will most likely have the same type of diseases and disorders but that doesn't mean that you have have to have it you have a choice but you have to know what those genetic patterns are and what those patterns what those habitual habits are so that they won't be having control over you but you ain't born fat boo y'all habits just be making y'all chunky i'm just saying Lastly, the very last cause could be just health issues in general, depending on things that are happening within your body. For example, if you have any type of disorder that causes your body to slow down some of its natural functions, then you may notice that your scalp isn't producing the right amount of sebum and things of that nature. So depending on what types of disorders you have, I may put a couple on the screen and then if you check my blog post, I'll go into a lot more detail over there. But a a lot of times the things that some a lot of times when you're sick one of the first things that you'll start noticing or one of the main signs that something's wrong in the body will be a change in your skin a change in your nails sometimes the nails can be a sign of a disorder or an infection as well as your skin so those are all different things that could alert you but these are all just the effects right we still have to tackle the cause when we're talking about your hair type when we're talking about hair type we're talking about a couple of different factors right so your sebum level your hair's porosity your skin cell turnover cycle some people's skin cell turnover cycles happen a little more rapidly depending on what type of ailments or anything that they could be dealing with within their body right so everything is going to be a little bit different depending on what you're dealing with in the body this is why when you go into a doctor's office they'll run certain tests on you because regardless there will be a bunch of different people you could have for sure a, the same disease that thousands of people have but different medications and different things are going to affect everybody differently based on your genetic makeup and a lot of other different factors so those are things that you all want to be sure of because when you are dealing with any type of scalp infection or anything that is classified is a certain medical condition it's a very small and minute one that may not even take any type of over-the-counter medication or any prescription but you still have to learn the science of hair so when you learn your porosity you have to pick shampoos and conditioner based on your hair's porosity we'll have a video coming up soon about porosities but i'll just use high porosity hair for an example if you have high porosity hair like myself you have a cuticle that is always open so you want to use leave-in conditioners and shampoos and conditioners that are going to aid the hair at keeping the cuticle a little smoother not locked not tight but a 
little smoother and it'll help you control the cuticle right but you don't ever want to lock it down and make the cuticle impossible for it to open and close when it wants to because you want to work with the body not against it you don't want to put the body in chains you want to make the body easier you want to make the natural systems of the body easier to go so again, depending on your porosity, you're going to shop for shampoos and conditioners. You don't just get a shampoo or conditioner because it's popular. You shop for a shampoo and conditioner based on your cuticle, based on the way that your cuticle opens and closes. That's the way that you select hair products. If you would like to know more about how to select hair products in detail, then make sure you check out one of my eBooks on porosity or hair styling 101 or all those different things. I, okay, this next one may be confusing, so just stay with me. You want to limit the amount of do-it-yourself, the do-it-yourself styling, do-it-yourself hair products, and all of that. And I'm not saying that you're not smart enough to do your own hair. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, when you're do when you're messing with do-it-yourself products, when you're doing these, when you're using a lot of these homemade hair products that are coming out on TikTok, what you're doing is really investing and in allowing yourself to be a test dummy. Because at the end of the day, most of the people who are making products at home, they're doing it for the first time, and you're their test dummy. And in a couple of years, they're going to keep, you know, scaling their business and making changes based on what's happening to your hair. So these are not different businesses and companies that are just like so well rounded and well trusted. So you really need to be careful when it comes to picking hair products and overloading your scalp and the hair shaft with hair products because hair products are tools. They should help you do something. They are not the thing that is going to grow your hair. They are not the thing that is going to help you style, that are going to style your hair. They just help you. All right if you must do your own hair you have to learn the proper procedures it's all of the hacking and like i'm not gonna use that instead of using that i'm gonna use this those are the things that honestly mess everybody up because if everybody was to just blow dry their hair like normal with no hacks with no layering product after product after product after product and things of that nature on then a lot of the heat damage that is around now and a lot of the problems that everybody is having with with um, heat tools and things of that nature wouldn't happen because everybody would be like taking their time to really learn the products and the tools that they're using. But everybody kind of just playing in their hair all the time. 